Antenna designers have seemingly broken the laws of physics. They tell you that an antenna has gain, meaning that you get more out of it where it matters than you put in. Today, we're going to talk about how that happens and why that might be not the case. We also tell you about some cool tools you can use to get the most out of your antennas. Coming up. Hi everybody and welcome to Ria Shack. I am Ria N2RJ and on this channel we explain ham radio concepts and ham radio information and we try to make the complex easy for you to understand. So if you like this type of content, if you like learning about ham radio, if you like learning about electronics, please give us a like and subscribe and you also hit the notification bell so this way you don't miss any of my future videos. I'm posting two or more a week now, so be sure you don't miss out. Today we're going to talk about antenna gain, which is how seemingly we get more of an antenna where it matters than we put in. So let's get to it. Now, if you notice on this topic of antenna gain, I chose my words very carefully. I said you get more of it out of it where it matters than you put in. And where it matters is important because, as you know, we cannot create energy. Energy and matter was created a long time ago, and there is simply none of it that we can create. It's just not happening. So we, take, we, we have energy, and we have a finite amount of energy in the universe, and we're not going to be getting any more of it. So how does an antenna have gain? Well, let's lay down some core concepts here. So first of all, let's talk about decibels. If you have a ham radio license, you probably heard about decibels and the decibel way of measurement. But actually, decibels are more of a scale of comparison. You're comparing two signals. You're comparing to a reference. And in this case, you're comparing to a reference. And you have the signal you want to measure and, and measure it against. So let's say you have one signal that's three times, that's two times another signal. That's three dB. You can say that this signal is three dB higher than that other signal. If you have one that's 10 times higher, it's 10 times, it's 10 dB. So generally, even if you don't want to do the math of exactly calculating decibels, you can roughly think of three decibels as being twice and 10 decibels as being 10. And the cool thing is you can just add them. You don't have to multiply or anything. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, let's go back to geometry class in school. Let's talk about the X, the Y, and the Z planes. So the reason we talk about the X, Y, and the Z planes, and it's gonna become a lot clearer now, is that when we talk about gain, we don't talk about a uniform amount of gain except in one specific circumstance. We don't talk about basically an antenna putting out more than it had on the input. We talk about an antenna having more gain in particular desired directions. So let's say, for example, you have a Yagi antenna. And let's say this is a Let's say this is a VHF Yagi antenna, and we're going to keep things simple. Let's say it has 10 dB of forward gain. So what essentially this means is that if you point it at a particular location, it's going to appear to be as effective as an antenna at 10 times as effective as a reference antenna. Now, what exactly are reference antennas? There are two types of reference antennas in use when we're doing these decibel calculations and gain calculations and citing gain figures. The first and perhaps the most common is a dipole. So you have the dipole and the dipole generally you would have an antenna gain as being in DBD or reference to a dipole. All fair and good. But let's just say, you know, you, you want to measure against the, the purest 
you know, point source of energy and you want to measure against something that is, you know, that's not a dipole. Because remember, a dipole basically has forward gain too. It doesn't have uniform gain in all directions. So you find that a lot of antenna gain figures are sighted against what you call an isotropic radiator. So an isotropic radiator is basically a point source. So it's a point. It's a tiny point. And it has uniform, completely uniform gain in every direction. We're talking about sphere, spherical um, direction. So it has uniform gain in every direction. This is the baseline that you find a lot of antenna manufacturers and designers use. So you'll find the gain figures cited in DBI. So let's go back to that two meter antenna. Let's say it told us that that 10 dB was 10 dBI. So that's 10 decibels or 10 times the amount of energy you would have from, an, from that antenna versus an isotropic source versus that single point source that's uniform all the way around. Well, let's say we wanted to find out what dBD is reference to a dipole. So a dipole, the reference dipole is 2.15 dBi. So a dipole itself relative to the isotropic radiator is 2.15 decibels. So you will find that the, the dipole, right, and the measure of dBd is basically dBi plus 2.15 dB. So it's fairly easy now to calculate from dBd to dBi or vice versa. So that 10 dB Yagi antenna, if we wanted to find out what it was in dBd, we just minus 2.15 from that. So that would be 7.85, 7 plus 2, 9 plus, yep, 7.85 dB. So it would be 7.85 dB for, and that would be DBD. So a lot of people tend to use DBD because it's, you know, a dipole is something they know versus this isotropic source. But really, you know, it's kind of like just preference. You know, there's really nothing special about one versus the other. You know, some people just like to compare. So that is gain in a nutshell. But let's wait, there is more. There is actually not just gain you have to worry about. Because remember, I told you, you get gain in certain directions. What if you want to use that to your advantage? Well, let's talk about that coming up. So practically speaking, what does gain get me? Well, you know, a lot of hams, they like to play the gain game. You know, they like to say, my antenna is bigger than yours. It's gained more than yours. Really, it doesn't matter on HF all that much. It will matter more on VHF. Simply because the propagation on HF is so variable compared to VHF. And a little bit of gain here and there is really not going to, to give you what you're, um, to give you much of an advantage. However, there is something that is an aspect of gain that might not seem so obvious to people. And that is the directivity of an antenna. So the long story short, the directivity of an antenna tells you just how good it is at not just receiving signals in the forward direction or the desired direction, but rejecting them from the undesired directions, like for example, the back of the antenna or the side of the antenna. And this will tell you now that practically speaking, what do you want to use this for? Well, Let's say you're operating HF and let's say, for example, you're on the West Coast because I think the West Coast needs to get some love on contesting too. Let's say you're beaming to, let's say you're beaming to Australia and New Zealand. So you're pointing toward Australia and New Zealand. And then you have all the stations from Japan who are very loud because, you know, a lot of Japanese stations, they have big antennas and big amplifiers and such. And you are now 
you know, you're being pummeled by these guys. I mean, you know, they're, they're kind of, they're very loud with their, their stations. Or maybe even you have the California kilowatt. You ever heard that expression? Well, look it up. And then, um, you know, you're pointed in one direction and you have, you know, basically a, an assault from some of these stronger signals. How do you, how do you cope with that? Well, the easiest way is to have a directional antenna. If you have a somewhat omnidirectional antenna, you will also you will have a situation where you are getting unwanted signals, a lot of unwanted signals, and it's going to interfere with you. But also, you will be interfering with other people because you'll be strong to them. And the way that HF propagation will work is that you will be hearing a lot of distant signals. So you're not like VHF where you're just going to hear a few signals around maybe for like 50 miles or more, you know, you're going to be hearing far and wide. So that's where the gain comes in. And a lot of people, a lot of HF operators will select, particularly contesters, will select HF antennas that have good front to back rejection. Because then you can put your back towards the unwanted signals and then you can work what you want to hear. So that is, that's one way to do it. Um... Other uses for gain in the VHF world. So let's say you have a VHF antenna. Let's say you want to put a, a, a mobile antenna. Now, a mobile antenna is not so straightforward. You just can't get the biggest high gain antenna. Because remember we said that gain really is a compromise, right? You're taken away from one direction to put in another. So... Let's say you, you can't just get the highest gain mobile whip antenna 5 8 and then you figure that you're going to use that. Well, gain on these whips, basically, instead of being with a beam width like, you know, on the X and Y axes, you now have the Z axes to worry about. So, so with something like a quarter wave, you find that you will have a wider angle on the z-axis whereas with something like a 5 8 wave it will be a lot narrower but of course further out it will be a lot stronger you'll have a lot more gain so this in essence gives you a choice of two or three different types of um, antennas to choose from you can either choose a quarter wave 19 inch whip for two meters for example or you can go and you can choose a longer high gain antenna that will get you out for further, um, for a longer distance. And it generally comes down to where do you operate. So you'll find a lot of urban operators tend to have the shorter whips on their vehicles, or they're supposed to. Whereas people like me out in rural areas, you'll find that we have longer whips because our repeaters are fewer and far between. So, you know, it's really six of one half dozen of the other. Anyway, so that's gain, and I hope you learned something. Um, let's talk about tools, and we're going to talk about a couple of tools you can use to model how your antennas will do with a particular gain. Coming up. So I'm going to mention to you two tools that you can use for making the most out of the gain on your antenna. And we're going to do a little more in-depth on this in another video, but I figured I should at least mention them on this one. So the first one, I mean, since I like HF operating, it is the tool called HFTA. And HFTA means HF Terrain Assessment. It was included with the ARRL antenna book. And basically what it does is it allows you to check how an HF antenna performs over terrain. So you can check it where you are. Or if you're shopping for a house and you're looking for a house that performs well on HF, you can pretty much look at HFTA and see how it performs. Now, not only do you get the raw performance with your terrain, but you also get the ability to, to check propagation statistics from the Voice of America. So the Voice of America the shortwave broadcast station, they conducted extensive propagation studies because obviously they wanted to get their message 
so to speak, out to the most people. And they did propagation studies to make the most out of their transmissions and broadcasts. So this data, of course, being U.S. government research, is now public domain. And as a result, we can access it and we use it to model propagation. So you can see like elevation statistics and such like that from uh, propagation. And um, the other thing, uh, tool I want to mention too, is the NEC tools. So there are a bunch of different NEC tools, NEC tools you can use to model antennas and see how they perform over various um, uh, ground and height above ground and, you know, types of antennas and stuff. Really cool. They're used for designing antennas and such like that. Of course, we're not going to talk about those in depth today, but I thought I should at least mention them. We are going to talk about them in a future video, of course. And um, But let me know what you want to know about these in the comments so that I can uh, make a great video for you guys on these. Well, that's it for this week, another episode. We're going to talk about alternative operating systems in the main episodes, not the Q&As. And um, that's coming up. That should be pretty exciting. So anyway, thank you very much. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Tell your friends. And I really enjoy all the support the channel is getting. Share the knowledge. 73, this is N2RJ. Take care. Bye-bye now. Thank you.